Well, let's talk about where the escalation has brought us. From Fox 4, Josh Hawley speaks out, arguing Biden called him a Nazi hmm. when talking to reporters. U.S. Senator Hawley fired back Friday, saying President-elect Joe Biden compared him to a Nazi propagandist. Uh, he didn't say he did. Joe Biden did. From, we have from the Dallas News, Joe Biden likens Ted Cruz to Nazi propagandist Goebbels for helping Trump spread big lie about election fraud. It wasn't just Cruz. It was also Josh Hawley. Now, Hawley's firing back, saying President-elect Biden has just compared me and another Republican senator to Nazis. Think about that for a moment. Let that sink in. Hawley argued he raised lawful questions about the way elections were conducted, just as Democrats did in previous years, but saw a much different outcome. This is undignified, immature, and intemperate behavior from the president-elect. It is utterly shameful. He should act like a dignified adult and retract these sick comments. The president-elect made the comments while answering reporters' questions in Washington, D.C. Friday afternoon. A reporter asked Biden if Senators Hawley and Cruz should resign after a violent mob contesting the election results stormed the Capitol. Biden said the two senators should be flat beaten in their next elections. Biden then referred to the big lie and said that those like Goebbels Hawley and Cruz kept repeating the lie. Goebbels was a member of the Nazi party and a Reich minister of propaganda under Adolf Hitler during World War II. It's exactly the kind of rhetoric everybody would want to hear from the incoming president-elect, right? The one who's calling for unity? No, this is, this is a level of depravity and insanity. I'm so what should he do in his last few weeks? Trump? Yeah. A few days. A few days. A few days. Sorry, sorry. I mean, he's gonna, they're, they're, I don't know, but they're, they said they're going to impeach him on Monday. The Democrats are going to impeach him. I don't know if he'll get removed because if Republicans and Democrats split 50-50, then Mike Pence breaks the tie. But what if Mitch McConnell says, nah, I'll break the tie. And he decides Trump, Trump's got to go, you we, know, and then, he, and then he votes him out. Are we going to get any declassified files? No, I don't think so. Mm, I don't. Trump has been unable to get anything declassified. They don't listen to him. He's talking about firing people. I don't know what he's going to do. But listen, you know, I was mentioning this earlier. When you have the people who are willing to walk away kind of conceding with their tail between their legs and then you throw something at the back of their head. This from Joe Biden is like they're pouring fuel on the fire. Why, why would he say this about these senators? Why, why would he tell? You know, look. It was over. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's done. And I'll tell you what's, what's really crazy about this scenario. What Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley did was entirely constitutional. Yeah. They were allowed to do it. It was not out of the ordinary. It's happened before. It happened in 2005. It happened a bunch of times. I mean, 2016 was crazy. And the end result would have been Biden getting certified as president. It would have given Trump supporters their voice in, on, on the Electoral College count floor. It would have satisfied many, not all, to be like, well, at least the American people can hear what we have to say. And we weren't denied that opportunity. Now, unfortunately, it was the Trump supporters who stormed in and stopped that from happening. But to criticize Josh Hawley and Ted Cruz as though they're Nazi propagandists or in any way like him, simply because they wanted to say, here's what's happening and here's why we have concerns about this. That's that I think that should be evidence that people don't want unity and that this is likely going to escalate and escalate faster than you realize. It reminds me about what the Nazis did because they would demonize the, the communists. And then he, but, so, but, but, so but he's like, not, we need a new national crack down on terrorism. Those people are acting like the Nazi party from old. It's like, that's what the Nazis did to the communists. They cracked down and they said that they were the evil from, you know, the 10 years ago in Russia or whatever. I'm sorry. No, the first sentence is you're a Nazi. The second sentence is unity. Everyone come hmm. together. Like, really? Dude. Are you, are you really trying to act like you're, you're bringing people together if you're using hyperbolic language like that? Well, so you, we have had for years people tweeting things about killing Nazis and punching them, but then they go and call literally everyone Nazis or compare everyone to Nazis. And so what are people supposed to think? You want to hurt us. You want to attack us because it's not about attacking Nazis. It's about using the worst possible smear you can against those you don't agree with. That way, when you advocate for something, like, listen, there are people on Twitter who are saying, you know, kill Nazis or whatever. Twitter allows it. Then, once that's been approved, they then tack onto it, here's a list of who the Nazis are, and they grab random people they don't like. And now Twitter's approved that. So I'll tell you, when, when Joe Biden says that he says the, the, the protesters are domestic terrorists, those that stormed the Capitol, he says these, these senators are basically propagandists for the insurrection. The Wall Street Journal reports, Mr. Biden has said he, he plans to make a priority of, pass, of a law, a, a passing a law against domestic terrorism, 
and he has been and he has been urged to create a White House post overseeing the fight against ideological inspired oh, violent extremists no. and increasing funding to combat them. Who, it, who, is it called the Enabling Act? It, yeah, I, you know what I said? It's going to be called like the SAFE Act, like securing American freedoms, you know, enhanced or oh, something like geez. that. Oh, jeez. The who, SAFE Act. Who the SAFE for everybody. Him to safe start anew. So this is like another Homeland Security. Advise them. Come on. Who it's advised the establishment. Them? Yeah, exactly. Who did? Do we have ideas of who is in his ear right now? He's in his ear. He's an establishment uh, candidate. He's, he's a, so we've got a some... lobbyist. And he's going, not, not, what they're probably thinking, these establishment people, is once we get power, we better make sure these people never win again. And he's not just talking about Trump. He's talking about Bernie Sanders, too. And that's why I think it's hilarious. Many of these leftists walked right into this. It should have been obvious. I said it. If, if the establishment gets back in, they're going to lock the doors and no populist will ever see it, whether it's left or right. Yeah, they would do the same thing but, to Cortez, I would think. Um, Maybe well, Cortez is career. trying to play the game yeah. right now, calling for people's censorship. Another scary aspect of this is that, you know, Biden, he kind of showed that he's not really there. He, he's, he's not on it. He, he doesn't have the ball in front of him. It looks like someone else has the ball and is carrying this whole program here. When you look at his speech, when you look at his mindset, um, competent doesn't come to mind. And when you, when you have that, you also understand that this is the person that sold out to the special interest almost more than any other president before him. He argued with Barack Obama saying that there needs to be more special interest inside of the Obama administration. And Obama had to tell him no. So when we have big tech executives inside of the Biden administration, Goldman Sachs, the military industrial complex, and you have unlimited power, you look at that entire recipe, there's no one or nothing that could check him. Another thing that I kind of wanted to bring up is that if, if you remember, Chuck Schumer literally brought up that if you mess with this, I, I, this is not his exact phrase, but he said, when Donald Trump messes with uh, the intelligence agencies, they have six ways to Sunday to get back at him. Mm -hmm. Um, so I also, in relation to that, I also want to bring up this CB, CBS news article that is literally titled, Social Media is a Tool of the CIA Seriously. That is the title of their article on CBS News. And they start off by saying, quote, you don't need to wear a tinfoil hat to believe that the CIA is using Facebook, Twitter, Google, and other social media companies to spy on people. That's because the CIA published a helpful list of press releases on all the social media ventures it sponsors via its technology investment firm in QTEL. So again, that's that's the firm that I brought up here previously before. So there is a lot of things to talk about. There There's a lot of room for kind of speculation here, even though I don't like doing that. But we have to understand when we look at these big tech companies, they're not just outside entities outside of the government. They are entities that work with the government hand in hand, not just spying on you, but in more severe ways than we even know. And this is truly an emerging power that, that can't be unchecked. And Amazon. It's not considered well, a social network, but they have that 100%. You know, computer that everyone's got, people have in their house that you can command and listen. Well, this is another thing with, Ama yeah. with Amazon. They're working, they're working on new... Uh, technology that will break encryption. They're working on. Oh, they've got it. Well, they do. Yeah, they're, they I mean, also. Well, uh, quantum we, supremacy. You know, you know about this, right, yeah. Bill? Yeah, but I don't think it's it's. Fully we don't know the exact levels. Encryption. Yeah, we don't know the exact details here. They were heavily criticized for developing facial recognition technology that was used by ICE, but that's only just the tip of the iceberg here. Literally. Uh, comparatively to all the other big deep state projects that they're working on, Luke, that they're developing, that Luke, need to be brought up. Have you seen Go Big Show on TBS? Uh, we were slowly, we were, I was watching why, two why, minutes why, of it when why, you were watching Why can't it. you just let them have the power? Didn't you want to see the man do the backflip on the tricycle? I, the man I was did too busy working out. I there was another know. guy I heard, yeah. Luke, who yeah. got a football to the groin. Now, Interesting. Yes. wouldn't you much rather just order a pizza, sit back, watch a football to the groin show, and leave the Democrats to to have their power and what, let them do what they want. Wasn't that in uh, Idiocracy where they had a show where the guy was oh, just getting, getting hit in the balls? <laughs> Did, really? The show that you were watching, was there really no, a segment no, where no, they no, had? No, okay. No. Oh, okay. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't though. be surprised either. Yeah. But yeah, Idiocracy, man. Mike Judge nailed it. Yeah. I um, mean, to be to be honest, Donald Trump's in the WWE Hall of Fame. And then Camacho, the president, was a wrestler. So Beavis and Butthead's coming back, I heard. Right. Oh, well, it comes back every so often, doesn't it? Yeah. I think we're we're headed for dark days, man. Because what's happening is happening faster and faster. And what we saw at the Capitol was, 
I don't, you know, I think in terms of the political ramifications, it was serious. And the craziest thing is when you look at photos and there's like, there's a photo going around of a guy with zip tie handcuffs and people are like, what were they planning on doing with that? Like taking hostages. And then there's a picture of a grandma who's just like waving a little flag and she has Mm -hmm. no idea what's going on. It's really, really weird what we're seeing, but the media is treating this like the apocalypse. It's exactly what the left, the establishment, the cultural institutions needed to take action to start purging everybody. Yeah, so, there, so now, there, now we're, there, there were reports earlier before the show that uh, Steve Bannon's show has been deleted from YouTube. So yeah. I think, it, you know, and they said it was for election-related misinformation. Yeah, uh, that wouldn't surprise me. And there's a very famous meme going around now that says, quote, we spend $750 billion annually on defense, and the center of American government fell in two hours to the Duck Dynasty and the guy in the Chewbacca bikini. It's and true. they have a photo of, of, <laughs> of the... You know, the guys in costume. You know, it's, you know, you know it's really funny. As this purge is going on, I, I do think some people are leaving Twitter, that they're deactivating their accounts and they're going to parlor because the president has been removed. But I think a lot of people are being banned and a lot of people are noticing. I think it's probably a lot of people purposefully leaving. I, I wonder if the majority is, is actual bannings. But my, my Twitter following is like, it goes down and it spikes really high because I'll, like, I'll tweet something and then the people who remain will start following me. But then as people are leaving, it goes down. A lot of people are down. Like I saw one tweet just now, 16,000 people. That's, yeah, Julian huge. Assange's uh, mother just tweeted that she lost 6,000 followers just wow. now. Yeah. This is a mass purge. This can't just be people leaving. I, Twitter is going through networks. They're probably looking at a network and just removing yeah, people. Yeah, said they were going through Rudy Giuliani's well, so, so there, there's, a, there's a, tw- a Twitter bot that will tell you when someone in the yeah. Trump network follows or unfollows. And it was this massive lift saying Rudy Giuliani unfollowed this person and this person and this person. And just huge list of people saying Rudy Giuliani unfollowed these people. And I'm like, did Twitter just pull up Rudy Giuliani's following list and just delete everybody he followed? Because they all got trying nuked. to protect people, maybe. No, I don't know. Rudy Giuliani is fighting for Trump. So... I, removed. I, this, I, when I was down there in the bathroom, I just thought about that we need to break up these corporations again. This is this monopoly on public speech. And I just don't see a value to shattering the corporations into a bunch of proprietary networks. Like, it, why would we break Facebook into Facebook Prime and Instagram again that Zuckerberg owns both of, that the code is still... So I, I keep going back to the way we would break up a social network's monopoly is by freeing their software code after they reach a certain level of user base. And people's argument is... Why would I give up my work for all this, my life's work, if I've attained 100 million followers, now I lose my code? And I'm like, well, your code going free doesn't mean you lose the network. You still own Facebook. You still can profit off of all that activity on Facebook, but the code... Yeah, your co- a code should be like an idea. I, yeah. I think it should be open sourced, and I think if we did have open source technology, the world would be a lot better and freer. And the network well, effects that you can achieve. My opinion. The, the networks, network effects and growth you can achieve, not to mention because your community will trust you more now, because well, you're being look, look. transparent with them. But it's it's the reason Bitcoin is exploding right now is because it's open. There's not going to be a closed system. But I, I understand that you guys view the code as our code. I think that sometimes the code can be my code, and you're all just dirty commies who think that. <laughs> and I actually believe in private property, so I disagree. Uh, but in all seriousness, no, I think there can be, I think a lot of things need to be open, depending on what they are. Probably social media. If it's something that has a serious impact on our politics, civics, then we should probably understand how that works. But if it's a proprietary service, I don't think that code should be forced. Like open. a city, no, not forced, but like it's in we your have. interest to, well, to do it. Well, like I'm voting suggesting, systems. yes, we know absolutely. How they're working, why they're working, and we should be able to watch. Because think about it this way: if we could see the voting counting going in in real time and how the code worked, and then something weird happened and a vote flipped, everybody would see it. The problem, I guess, is that it's connected to the internet. But then everyone's watching it, you know what I mean? So, I don't know. There's, 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 there's challenges to this. It's just accountability. Why can't we have accountability? We should have accountability for so many different things in our society that would clear things up. If you're going to say that there was Russian collusion with Donald Trump, show us the evidence. It took them a while to reveal nothing. absolutely nothing. And then in the meantime, they slandered and discredited and threw people under the, the, the bus, including myself and We Are Change. We're talking about, you know, the, the voting that just happened. Be transparent. Do investigations. Look into it. Show us the evidence. Uh, again, that would have 
proved and solved so much angst that would have proved and solved so much of the uncertainty and 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 again when these companies make these large decisions banning people destroying people's voice they're doing it in a way where there's no accountability for that there's no way to appeal it we don't even know why the decision was made we don't know exactly what even led up to it it's just a totalitarian saying that's it i get my way i don't even have to say why i did what i did and that's a dangerous unaccountable power that surely it, we, i was i was saying this years ago is going to be abused is being abused right now a lot of people want to talk about civil war and stuff and they think the right has some tremendous advantage because they're the tough guys, because they're the survivalists and all that stuff. But I said, listen, man, they'll sever the lines of communication in two seconds before any, anything starts. And then you'll be sitting there looking at your phone saying, I wonder what's going on. The lines of communication are being severed. It's, it's what they're doing. Yeah, the Zuckerberg's kind of like a mayor of a city, of a town. And, and right now mm. it's like a private town. Like, he's not a mayor. Well, it's kind of like he's, he's more a, like an a, internet mayor or no, an no, internet like, governor. Well, have you ever seen those old westerns? Where like the, the the guy rides into the town and he's like, "It's my town, exactly. sheriff. You it's, work for me. It's my town now, right. and he he owns the town. So our government is in place to make sure that no individual owns these cities. Like no one owns New York. It's controlled by all of us. And I think that Facebook has gotten to the strength of power. Well, yeah. someone governs it. That's put into no, power. Let's be real though. By us. Look at look uh, what De Blasio is doing legally. Getting, look, his wife's got a two million dollar staff but, while but the city burns. The way the law is built, I'm just talking right, about. Right, I get it. I get is it. that I think that. Facebook is powerful enough that and influential enough that we should treat it like a city and not not a, a, a piece of, of ownership of something that someone can own. And I'm just talking about the code. He can still own the domain and people can still use Facebook and he can have stores and everything. Twitter, twi Twitter can be publicly owned and open with guaranteed rights and we don't need to worry about making money on or it. Or they could it have utility. It could still be private and all the code could be a utility that we could build another network that is a utility with the same code that could integrate with Twitter. Yes. Yes. It's and, and I, cuz if you shatter it into a bunch of proprietary networks it wouldn't stop the monopoly right. on the behavior. Right. What what I, I think we need platforms that are free speech, you know, open, publicly owned. And that's just me. Look, maybe I'm lefty, huh? Taxpayer funded, nationalized with guaranteed rights. You break the law, someone reports you, it's a criminal offense. You broke the law. If you say a nasty opinion, you block them and say, don't want to see you. That's simple. What do you do? Harassment laws apply. Well, Harassment this, is, is a crime. You this is how the big networks you, grew under that premise. Mostly, right. I mean, their content policies were already, were always pretty restrictive. Like, you know, but to a certain degree, they rode the whole wave of letting people say most of what was okay and now they're doing the bait and switch you they know, sell the company in. that's a big problem too is that you can make a company make it huge and popular and then sell it to some totalitarian dictator and then all of a sudden 100 million people are now being driven by this this guy that now owns the city you basically handed the keys of the city to this next guy so yeah i agree i don't think that these networks should be controlled by the bait and switch the, the even the potential for the bait and switch shouldn't exist yeah and Do you, okay. no, no, you want, I'm, well, I'm going to change the subject. Yeah, there's you would just expect that executives with billions of dollars, thousands of developers at their disposal could come up with realistic problems for breaking echo chambers like, OK, yeah. here's recommendations of stuff that you might disagree with or from people from the other side of the spectrum. Here's recommendations for this. Here's how to curate your algorithm. So, you know, so you're getting a balanced diet of information That's like they, they just literally it, it is well, intentional you, you, but, you know, but you know the problem with that is for like twitter is that if you're somebody who's like if is a far leftist and they say why don't you follow tim pool he's mm. a you know moderate individual who believes in free speech and liberty then they're going to start spamming me and insulting me and it's going to be really annoying the problem is ultimately in the end you have uh you have many different kinds of people but there seems to be two overarching kinds of people the if someone is bothering me, I'll block them group. And the if someone's bothering me, I demand Twitter block them from everyone group. Yeah. And so there's no negotiating. I, I, it's, it's one of the things that I think Jack Dorsey actually said in one of his testimony, in, in, in his Senate testimony. He was like, we have people who are demanding on the left that we ban people for this reason. And then the right demands that we don't ban them for this reason. And we have to tr figure out like we have these both, you know, both groups screaming in our ears. Now, I guess ultimately, because the cultural institutions and the media are controlled by the left, these big tech companies know exactly who butters their bread. Yeah. They want to sell advertisements, right? Well, 
if a news story comes out in the Wall Street Journal that YouTube does bad, then YouTube says, we're so sorry, Wall Street Journal, please. And then they, they cave. That's what, that, that's what happened with PewDiePie in the first adpocalypse. And, and the crazy thing is these news outlets know YouTube is their competition. So they're doing it on purpose for probably for, not, for a financial gain. But they also learned that people like to hear their own thoughts regurgitated to them. So they created echo chambers through the algorithm. And I remember back in the day when the internet was still amazing and a beautiful place and it was a free place because it didn't have any algorithms. It didn't have any news feeds. It didn't have any curated timelines with these corporations deciding what you should hear. If you would subscribe to something, you would actually see it. You would actually hear it. This curation has essentially led to these larger echo chambers, to these larger, to these larger radicalizations, and have pushed people further and further apart on the political spectrum, where now we are in a situation where people are at each other's throats. And we have to wake up and realize that this was done by social media. So what makes you think giving all your power to social media is going to fix it? This is such a frustrating thing. You see the direct fingerprint, whether it's the mental health crisis, whether it's the algorithm, whether it's the echo chamber, whether it's them colluding with intelligence agencies and government agencies Dude. when you see this problem and and, and they 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 have the, they're a part of it and now you have people saying they're gonna fix it all if you just give them all of your power it's, it's and like, people are falling for it celebrating this today you gotta be freaking kidding me it's like the monkey's paw you know that story it's like mm -hmm. you get three wishes but then it twists your wish these leftists are like yeah censorship yeah they're going to get censor censored. all the bad people. And then the definition of bad. It's changes. like a Twilight Zone episode but it where really, it's like, it was time now. It's not fair. It's like, why am I being banned? No, everyone was finally banned and I could finally have peace. And then they're, they're glad they're, they drop their phone and the phone shatters. No, you know, you know, that episode. No, right? it sounds yeah, awesome, it's the episode though. where the guy like just wants to read and the world hmm. ends. Oh, and he breaks his glasses. Yeah. And he's got big, thick glasses. So I'm imagining it's like a leftist demanding everyone be banned and then finally once everyone's banned he has his phone he's like no i yeah. can look and he drops his phone no well information now. people need to understand information is key during war one of the first things that was done during the iraq war from some of the reports that i heard from frontline soldiers is that there was leaflets dropped on populations oh yeah of course saying americans are coming they're here to liberate you and here to free you so this has been done as a part of psychological warfare many times throughout many important battles and this is in the information war ramping up to huge, uh, just astronomical levels where even fifth generational warfare doesn't put a candle to it, to what's happening now. And that's another term that people should look up and should research themselves when they want to understand what is deeply happening and what is going to happen from here. In Vietnam, they used to blast uh, audio in the jungle, this like demonic sounds. No, 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 no. It, and oh, it would scare I, the Vietnamese because no, they were they got, were all emotional got, and, and they wouldn't come out that night. No, I got to correct you. Talk about informational warfare. It was just like, let me, let me, you let know, me, medulla let me, oblongata. Let me correct you. Please do. During Vietnam, the U.S. would blast audio of wailing Vietnamese yeah. saying, why did I do it? I made a mistake. Run while you still can or you'll be trapped here for eternity like I am. Because their religious belief was that if they weren't properly buried, they were trapped to roam the area where they died forever. The problem was it was too effective. And the South Vietnamese, I believe it was the South who was working with us, panicked and ran when they heard wow. it. But imagine you're in the jungle in the dead of night with your gun, and then you hear a wailing, ghostly voice crying and begging you, saying, don't become trapped like I am. Run mm -hmm. while you still can. Psychological warfare is crazy stuff, man. That's what it's like, it's, you, know, you know that old fake story about the general and the pig's blood? No. Apparently, it's not a real story. But they, they talk about this, this uh, uh, general who, after killing a bunch of, you know, like uh, Muslim soldiers in the Middle East, poured pig's blood on them and left one alive and let him leave so that he went and told them and then they all stopped fighting. I believe that story is not true, but people tell it all the time. The idea being that he's like, oh, no, it's, you know, you, you, this is bad. It's against their religion. And so he panicked, told everyone, and then they refused to engage. Psychological warfare. Oh, you know what? It's simple. Pen is mightier than the sword. Well, That's the, what they say. The first step in it is to control communication. Once you control communication, once you control what people can and cannot listen to, you have a, such a severe advantage over your supposed enemies or even someone you think are the Nazis. You know what Trump's mistake was? He didn't watch Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> okay, Because I just yeah. watched Revenge of the Sith. That and was you, his and mistake. You know, you know what Palpatine did? Smart. Palpatine feigned a assassination attempt. Yep. You know, when Mace Window comes in and then Anakin's there and then he's like, don't let them kill me. I'm too weak. And then Anakin, you know, ends up killing Mace Windu and everything. 
I'm kidding, by the way. <laughs> but it is, it is interesting. Like, you know, tr- Trump is sitting there. I think I, I don't think Trump had, uh, to be honest, they're saying Trump incited and all this stuff. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think Trump intended for this to happen. When we had, we had Jack Murphy on recently, and he was saying that it sounded like when Trump was giving his speech, it was a concession speech. He said, sometimes it takes more courage to do nothing. And he was like, what does that mean? You know, yeah. like Trump was trying to wind things down. Well, he then, said it's going to be up to Mike Pence. Yeah. So like he, he, he made sure he had no responsibility at all. And everyone was like, OK, let's see what Mike Pence is going to do. And he released that statement, which um, so, got around. Somebody yeah. somebody tweeted something really funny. They said, how long until Trump uses the presidential alert system to send him? I yeah. was just thinking about that when he tweet. He's going to presidential alert his new parlor account. <laughs> yes. Well, there's like, even F there's even all. some scuttlebutt of them creating their own social media network. So well, he that, said that. That's yeah. That's and what they should do. And they should use the Minds code. They should take the codes there. Take the code and just build your own network do it. with we Minds need code. A government site, man. More and diversity. I mean, Trump's. Tim, you've known you've known to back up your social situation the whole time. Of course, you, you have to. You have to protect yourself. And the fact that you know he didn't. It's. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. We do the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. So come back to check us out when we go live. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. And we are also available on all podcast platforms for free. If you want to listen to us there, thanks for hanging out and we will see you all next time.